Have a sip of a drink and then let's see how they set up for the next. So we got team choosing what they want. And we got someone saying three tank, more tank. So this, actually let's talk about this while they get set up. This annoys me a little bit. Um, just a little bit. Like, they're, they're relatively polite about it, so it doesn't annoy me that much, but... People trying to, like, force a high-level meta into the game. Triple tank works because of the coordination between the tank players and the healers. The tank players getting enough damage and the synchronization of ultimates and just good play overall. You don't have to run, though, the Flavor of the Month meta comp. Like, we just saw, like, literally, if I go into a pub game and I see a Misfits comp where I see, like, Tracer, uh, Tracer, Genji, Widowmaker, Reinhardt, um, Zenyatta, Lucio, and... Yeah, that's it. Three DPS, one tank, two supports. And one of those is a Widowmaker. So they're basically taking a Widowmaker instead of a Winston, basically. Or a Widowmaker instead of a Reinhardt in, the, in one of those cases. Like, it's it was a nutty composition. If I see that in solo queue, I would lose my fucking shit. Because that takes so much coordination to work. It's a really good comp. But it takes so much coordination to make it work. So just trying to force a meta, especially like goal level, you don't need it. Play what you are mostly comfortable with. If you think a comp's gonna work, fine. So, yeah, like I'm fine with him just typing this, hey, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. You don't need to, like, if the team lineup looks okay, you got two supports, you got at least two tanks, you got two DBS, it's a fine team comp. You don't need triple tank. You don't need it. But, with this comp, with this comp, let me have a sip of coffee. Ah. Uh. Because I believe we got a screen with tab up. There we go. So we got our comp. We got our lineup. What am I seeing? Like, what, what's the plan with this comp? That's always my first thought when I'm, no matter what role I'm playing, is what's the plan with this comp, especially on something like this. First thing, first thing, is just, we have a huge amount of close range damage and we have a huge amount of barrier pressure. Soldier's really good at breaking barriers. Reaper's really good at breaking barriers. Rodog's very good at break, breaking barriers. Um... You want to break the enemy Reinhardt's barrier, and then you want to get picked with Rodog. That's literally what I'm thinking in terms of this. Chat, chat, are you behaving? Are you being mean? Also, thank you, Crashnock. It's very, very kind of you to say. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Hope you enjoy it. It looks like you're mostly behaving. Chat mom, just tell people off. I love you, chat mom. Doing a great job. Doing a great, great job. But yeah, my goal with this team lineup will be this. Spam the shit out of this. Get hooks, kill people, push in. That's literally the, the tactic with this. Don't get hooked by their Roadhog. Stay behind your barrier as much as possible. Break stuff, kill things. Just overextended a little bit. Could have died there very easily. This Reinhardt's got a bit nuts as well. He's sort of... Like, your team has lost the barrier war, I guess, already. If he's dropped his barrier that early, because he's just dead. Like, whoever loses the barrier war here loses the game. And because you're attacking, you can determine the ebb and flow of battle. So, break the barrier, and then go from there. Now you're in a really awkward position. Hey, the Lucio got caught. Good, 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 good. Just get out. Surviving is going to be very important here. Making sure that the picks are worth it. Making sure the trades are worth it. Keep their Reinhardt on the toes. This I don't like at all. This I think is a little bit unnecessary. Because if, if all that team turns around and just ganks you, you are done. Like, if the Ana just turns around and lands a sleep dart, you're done. They have a McCree. You are done. If they notice you, you are just dead and you are just finished. So I don't like that reposition, I'd rather just stay with the team, focus on the 6v6, and then just pick people off. That's perfectly- like, afterwards, everything that happens after that motion, I'm honestly okay with, because he's just staying with the team a little bit more. So this poke, this should have been punished instantly by the McCree, by the Anna, by the Roadhog, any of those could have just punished this. Didn't happen. Luckily, didn't happen. Roadhog tried and missed. Your team has now got an opportunity to push in, which is great. They've nano boosted a Reinhardt, who's already on low health. Once the armor is gone, Reinhardt is actually very vulnerable. Um, the way that Anna Ultimate and Reinhardt interact is actually kind of interesting. And by interesting, I should rightfully be saying broken. Um, because the damage mitigation from Anna applies before armor. So you are reducing your damage by 50% or whatever it is, and then it's being reduced even further by the armor. If it was reduced by the armor and then reduced by Anna, it would be a bit fairer. Um, 
So yeah, armor, that 200 armor on Reinhardt is actually why he's nearly impossible to kill. Once it's gone, once he's down to like 100 hit points, 200 hit points, he's actually pretty squishy. And so your team could just burn him down. Like that's a mistake by their Anna, basically. Um, this though, this I'm fine with, like you should be relatively near the front of the charge being Reaper. You got hooked, but when being hooked, you the enemy Roadhog is also stunned, and so the team punishes him for it. Your team just moves on nice and smoothly, takes the point, and is set up very nicely. Everyone just needs to stay nicely on this little threesome here. And you should have the point, no problem. Bish, bash, bosh. Oh, hey, it's Rec Deck. Uh, Rec Deck, are you in the chat? Uh, thanks for reviewing your Anna game last night. Too bad you can't make it live. Yeah, it, the VOD is on YouTube, so if you want to go and see that, if you haven't already watched it, definitely go watch it. Uh, I'd be more than willing, also, if you want to write like a comment with your feedback in it. Um, anything you want to tell me, uh, anything you feel is unfair, or you want to justify what you've done, or stuff like that. A++. Plus plus. Uh, as long as it's just like, no, no, it was completely shit. Anyway. Good covering from that. And honestly, this this actually annoys me a little bit. Actually, uh, how do I feel about this? This is actually an interesting question. This is always one of the more interesting aspects, which is, what do you do on this point of Eichenvol? This is also true somewhat for King's Row. When you're waiting for the payload to activate and move, you've got to be super careful. And honestly... Yeah, that's their Soldier 76 ult. You've won. They've just blown two ultimates in a really stupid location. You've won already. These guys should be pulling back towards the payload and just focusing on moving it as far as possible because they've used two resources. They've got two kills here. Two kills here is fucking meaningless. The payload literally can't move while it's waiting for the gate to open. No ground is being exchanged. It's literally free respawn time for these guys to come back. Using ultimates when you've just captured a point, when a point has just been flipped, is one of the most pointless and devastating things in Overwatch. Never do it. Never, never, never do it. I'm trying to think off the top of my head if there's an exception where, like, using ultimates when a payload is being activated or going through a gate that it automatically moves through is ever worth it? Only if, like, the attacking team, for example, has started using one of theirs and you counter it, it's... But it's very, very rarely useful. So the enemy team has basically blown a ton of resources. Like, if you think in terms of team power... Okay, this, this is how my mind works, by the way. I'm a scientist, right? So I work in graphs. Okay? Let's draw a graph, because I like graphs. I really like graphs. I goddamn love graphs. Let's say your team power, you've just won a team fight. You've just captured the point. You might have used an ultimate or two, but let's say you still have two ultimates in the tank. Um, so your team power's done this since the start. It's gone up and up and up and up and up, and then you used an ultimate or two, but it's about here. Okay? And then let's go to their team power. Let's set up another layer so we can do this, make it nice and pretty. Their team power has done the same. It's gone up and up and up and up. And then they lost a team fight. So in theory, they should be like up here. Because they lost a team fight, they might not have had the ultimates available. They might just be getting them now. That kind of thing. But then what they've done is they've gone and used High Noon and they've used, um, goddamn Tactical Visor. So now they've done this, or basically they, they've done this and just put themselves beneath pointlessly. Because you're not contesting anything, you're not fighting over anything. Your team power's dropped hard, and so in the next fight coming, the other team has ultimate advantage, because you've used both your offensive ultimates. This guy was tempted for a second, he was looking up, and hopefully, I'm hoping that he was looking up just to check if there's any threats above him and not looking for a sneaky teleport, because he wants to be on the front line here. They have a very tank-heavy lineup, there's a Roadhog involved, there's a, um, Reinhardt involved. You want to be aggressive with that. Anna, what are you doing, love? What are you doing, love? Don't do that. This is actually very interesting as well in this moment. Hey, Stylosa. Oh god, Sty. Sty, you just... <laughs> thank you for ruining my train of thought. Uh, why is Josh drawing a massive yes? Yes, thank you. Is he reviewing his smurf? Lol. But honestly, like, there's an interesting decision point here, okay? Very interesting decision point while I get distracted by the numpty in my chat room. Um, he has Death Blossom. Does he use it? And honestly, I like his reservation here in using it. What, I would have been tempted to use it after I heard that. The Anna Sleep Dart goes off, so he's free to use it now. But honestly, he doesn't need it, and Anna's just thrown herself off a cliff anyway, so fine. Whatever. Anna has suicided to respawn, I guess. That's the benefit of the doubt, so hey. It's absolutely fine. He's kept a hold of his ultimate, hasn't needed it, hasn't used it. We even got a Sandbrae just to be safe. And then he tries something very silly. This is a plan that I think has the best of intentions, but doesn't quite work out, ladies and gents, because this happens. So I think the plan 
The plan, if I had to guess, was to teleport up here. He wants to teleport up here. Well, one, this distance is too big for a Reaper. That's just a mechanical knowledge thing. That's, that's never going to work. So he ends up over here. Then he runs over here. Now, what I think has happened during this time is that Reaper has big stompy boots. So Rodox either just spotted his, like, the trail of his cloak or he's heard him instantly killed. If you're interested in teleporting locations, I think we actually get a good angle of it, a good view of it here. While we wait, do 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 do. Uh, there's two platforms literally above the point. We'll see it as he runs in, hopefully. There's two platforms right above the point that you can teleport to. Uh, they're, they're absolutely perfect for Reapers waiting to Death Blossom. Absolutely perfect for it. So if you are looking to be fancy, yeah. This... This pathway, this pathway is like Tilt City for me. And he's perfectly fine using it here because he's got like a front line being all distracting over here. But be very, very careful, ladies and gentlemen, when using this pathway to reinforce through because you are going through a choke point, a tiny, tiny choke point. And I'm sure that Stylosa is equally triggered as we, we look at this, um, as we look at this little pathway here, because this is the pathway. Yes, thank you, Stylosa. Oh, God, World Cup. This is literally the place where the United Kingdom got knocked out of the group stages, basically, because we tried to all filter through this little gap and we just got completely wrecked when doing so, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have to re-engage on second point Eichenwald, go the main way. Don't try and go through here. This is perfectly fine. The teleport's a bit pointless. You don't need to use that. But he's in a good location. Instantly explodes the McCree. Wraith forms, rejoins the rest of his team. Perfectly fine with that. Doesn't even risk using the Death Blossom and getting sleep darted. Holding onto the resource. Good stuff here. He's got a lot of power going into the next stage. Advances forward. Chases down people. This is a little bit over-aggressive, but the enemy team is staying around and fighting, so I punish it. Bit of a with Death Blossom. Like, he's been doing such a good job, and I think he just wanted to use it, but didn't need to use it there. That... Like, he was doing so well in just, like, conserving it, making sure he was using it reasonably, and then just, just blows it. Does hunt down the Roadhog. A bit touching, a bit risky, but the risk pays off. Like, that's the definition we were in. Also, I saw that we got a new subscriber as well. Deek Kari Kari, welcome, welcome, welcome to the many. We've got a shitload of people joining the many right now. I'll give you guys proper shoutouts as well when we're done, but because it's going to YouTube, I don't want to linger too long on you guys. I shouldn't even really be technically addressing you, but whatever. I, I love giving you guys some support. This is very, very sneaky. I'm not actually too keen on this flank. Like, he gets away with it because his team's already winning because they just seized all momentum and the Reinhardt's just gone in like a beast and thrown down the Earth Shatter. Um, but, like, Reinhardt's overextended already. Like, you've got very little moving the payload right now. There's still plenty of time for their team to reinforce. Um, so Reinhardt shouldn't have done that, basically. He should have been staying near the payload, staying alive that little bit longer. Goes in, gets a good snipe there, manages to retreat, and then retreats completely the wrong way. And there was like a hesitation as he made the decision. Make sure that you go forward and just go straight towards your team when trying to do that. Especially if you've got an Ana. The easiest thing to do is stay in line of sight of the Ana, because if the Ana could just drill healing into you, it's very hard to get killed. And yeah, like, this is, honestly, it's not... A bad game. Like, I would not feel too bad about this being in gold. It's just the main thing holding him back is decisions. And just making silly choices. And it's stuff like as well, like, you know, you could put some blame onto like the Reinhardt, for example, overextending there while the payload's so far back. Because the last point of Eichenwald, the reinforcement time is so mind blowingly short. You have to win a team fight, like, literally a couple of meters away from where you need to get the payload to. You have to win there, because if you don't, you just lose. Because uh, they can reinforce so much faster than you. Your reinforcement time is ridiculously long. Lost the McCree, so what's back to Reaper? He was just considering. I'm um, fine with him staying on the Reaper here. It's honestly perfectly fine. It's just good at blowing absolutely everything up. Be very careful when teleporting to here. There's, I find this completely pointless. Because you are so vulnerable from just anything shooting through that doorway. Don't do it. You're just standing still waiting to eat bullets. Doesn't save you much time anyway. You could just teleport across the bridge, literally. Luckily, the enemy team not holding this uh, choke point quite as tightly as they need to, which is lucky for you guys, because your Reinhardt managed to get out. Again, wear down the enemy Reinhardt barrier. Your Reinhardt needs to be covering the DPS. This is where, like, talking about Reinhardt positioning um, is so, so useful. Because the Reinhardt standing over here, what, what the fuck is he doing? What's he protecting? He's trying to get round for a cheeky flank, and maybe he's looking for, a, like, a way to swing in. And this, this is what I talk to Ryan a lot about, where this would be Ryan like two, three weeks ago. Um, this would be Ryan, yeah, about two, three weeks ago, trying to run in, zoning all things away with his hammer, zoning things away, swinging at him, trying to kill them. He doesn't need to do that. You can just keep his shield up and keep space for the Soldier 76 and for the Reaper to shell away, and suddenly his team has so much damage potential, so much zoning potential. 
They're going to eat damage very quickly because, hey, yeah, you're walking into a Reaper, a Soldier, a Torbjorn, all these damage sources. But again, the barrier just provides so much space for the team, the Roadhog, to do what he wants. Luckily, they do start pushing forward. There's a Molten Core, but the turret's already down, so it, honestly, it's not a bigger threat as you'd think. Make sure that you aren't the front line here as Reaper. Use the payload for cover and use your Reinhardt as well for a little bit of cover as well. You've got two tanks. Use them. Reinhardt overextending like a numpty. Kill him. Good, 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 good. Punish. More damage pouring in, absolutely lovely. This is looking really good for his team. Just stay near, relatively near the payload. Don't overextend and get too close without your tanks, because otherwise that happens. I think the Reaper... Where did that Reaper come from? I want to see where he came from. Did he teleport somewhere or did he just jump in? He just jumps in. He just literally nozzles around here and comes in. Like, if the Roadhog was stood here or if the Reinhardt was stood here, it would have been a little bit easier. Ah. <sighs> But this is this is last point Eichenwald in a nutshell. Like there's literally what two meters, two okay. There's about ten meters at the moment. But it's this is last point Eichenwald all over. You are literally clawing as much space as you can. Swaps to the McCree. No real issues with that. Shuts down the Reaper somewhat. Shuts down the Soldier a little bit more. Perfectly fine. The Reinhardt chasing people down a little bit too much. That Reinhardt is super vulnerable. Sights comes up. Roll back this way, get to safety, just focus on surviving. you still got two minutes, plenty of time. Like, just always, um, again, try and keep that metagame in your mind as well. What is the overarching plan here? This soldier has a death wish because he's trying to run and 1v1 a Roadhog. And everyone's exposing themselves to the line of sight here. Again, at high level play, like, you, they would probably be dead there. They would probably be dead trying to do that. So don't try and hunt down targets unnecessarily unless you can kill them super fast. This is honestly, like, a very difficult point for the team. What they need to do, and what this diva needs to be thinking of, is we've just lost one person. But. So they can't push forward. But what they really can't do as well is fall back. Because you don't want to lose control of the two doors that are behind him. These two doors are so hard to get through. So, so hard to get through. So just try and keep control of this little space here. And don't die. Like, these are the priorities right now. What this guy is doing is fucking insane and he's looking to just get sniped off by something he should not be doing that you should not be doing this um you're just looking to die here you just want to try and get set up slowly wait for the roadhog to come back in and then start pushing forward so your roadhog's back now now you can start pushing forward let the tanks lead because you're mccree now gotta be a bit careful soldiers ulted good stun on there soldier shuts that down molten cores up so just take your time with it no need to rush no rush you can wait so their reaper comes in the back line how did reaper get there I think he just literally ran round. So I think that's more a failing on like the Soldier 76's part. Or someone just failed over here on the back line. There's no notification of that. Unfortunate. Good positioning by their Reaper. Down it goes. And I like the fact that this VOD, by the way, is called. Um, if you can't see it, Eichenwald is hard. Eichenwald is very hard. Probably, probably the hardest goddamn map in the game. It's definitely the most defensive oriented one. Ah. <sighs> A little bit of coffee. There we go. You swap to the Tracer. This I find very desperate. Uh, you don't need to do this. You really don't need to do this. I think you would have been better on the McCree and the Soldier because your team does have a lot of brute forcing power and just relying on that would be perfectly fine. I don't think the Tracer adds anything necessarily more than the McCree, but their team is also struggling to cope with it, so it's working perfectly fine right now. Again, your team just needs to dodge the ulting Reinhardt. Don't bother engaging it too hard. Get rid of the Torbjorn. The turret explodes while it's building. It's a good tip, that, just to make sure that everyone just caught that. Um, when a turret is building, if you kill the Torbjorn, the turret also explodes. Ooh, nice. Uh, so if Torbjorn's trying to put down emergency turrets, just make sure that, you know, you nail the, the Torbjorn. They just got completely screwed over by the Tracer. So this is more failing on their part than success on yours, which sounds really weird. Sounds really, really weird, but let me go over that, because because I literally said, like, I'm not keen on the Tracer swap, and then they instantly win, so I need to justify that. I need to back that statement up, because, well, they just they just won. But what they did was they panicked. So Sound Barrier comes in. Good, good, good. This has given you a lot of space to go around. I would have actually just drilled the turret during the Sound Barrier and used the safety of that just to get rid of the turret. They've fallen back. They've stopped protecting the turret instantly. Reinhardt gets ulted, and I'm noticing, I think they're also missing one of the DPS. No, they're not. And you get this beautiful goddamn left click. Like, this is actually beautiful. Tons of damage managed to land here, because the Reinhardt drops his barrier. Tons of damage comes in from the front and the back, and all their team is suddenly in panic mode. This is the danger of Ana ulting, <laughs> nano boosting with a Reinhardt, is that you'll often lose a lot of protection when you do so. So you've got to be a bit careful here. 
and the Reinhardt just doesn't get the value off it, and no one's dealing with the Tracer properly, because, hey, the Torbjorn Tarot got destroyed, Torbjorn Tarot's one of the best things to counter Tracer, and everything goes to shit. They fucked up in their position. They backed up a little bit too far when they didn't need to, and I think Anna messed up a little bit by nano-boosting the um, Reinhardt instead of nano-boosting, say, like, the Reaper. That probably would have been a bit better. Told you, I'm sorry, lol, nah, whatever. I should have switched to Tracer earlier, I'm sure he's saying. Honestly, I think he's perfectly fine on the McCree and Reaper, and I think they would have still won that if they had the McCree and Reaper. Uh, now, chat, now I go over to you. Now, you can ask me questions. While we are asking questions, I want to acknowledge the beautiful people in chat who have subbed. So, I noticed that Valk subbed well here. I also noticed that Ryan has also joined us. I also noticed that Sty has been trolling in the chat. Sty is right, Sty's mods are goddamn beautiful, and... They would have banned him long ago. They would have banned him ages ago. And like Stai said earlier, by the way, like I, I mentioned Ryan as an example because Ryan, like in my mind, is a very public figure who's improved so, so markedly, so, so markedly with time. And his Reinhardt is just elevated so fast in just studying how he's been playing. And hey, S.A. Schwartog. Schwartog, that's a really good name. Schwartog, welcome to the many as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think that puts us actually incredibly close to 50 people. Uh, I'll get the proper overlays up and get that sorted out. Uh, Rex for the win asks, have you done a Winston one of these? No, I haven't. I do have a Winston game of Ryan's that I'll probably do like a, another Saving Private Ryan on and just upload that straight to the YouTube. Uh, just to review that one. Because Winston's actually a very interesting one. Winston is very reliant on the team, but still. If a team is dead, it's better to run or better to quickly die. That's, that's a very difficult decision to make, um, and it depends on a number of factors. That's actually one of the decisions that I'm very bad at as well, I'll admit that freely, is that I think I try and run too often, I think that I can try and outplay and run a little bit too much. Um, in general, if you're like already face to face with the enemy team, just, just die, just fight and die. Um, there's no shame in it. If you have an escape ability, then try and use it and try and get out, but if it's just... Like, if the odds are like 70 30 to you, you know, 70% you die, 30% you escape, just die. No need to waste the extra five seconds because if your team has to wait for you, and this happens to me all the time on control maps, uh, especially, if you waste that time, um, you are just literally giving the enemy teams just time to win. And the amount of times that I've lost in even like six stacks, and I think this is when like me, Ryan, Stai, Valk will six stack up together. Um, one of the big issues we have is just getting back into fights quickly when we're just waiting for everyone to group up and then we have to like decide on a direction to go and then we have to decide how we're going to do it and it just takes so long and in that time the enemy team is just setting up and preparing and getting ready to kill us and so we just die. Uh, so it, it's definitely one of the hardest decisions to make but in general, dying is the faster way out so just die, just fight and die. Once, once the fight is called is over, it's done. Greetings from the Alphacast community to the many. Alphacast, I love you, you're the best man. Like, Alphacast is amazing, he's an amazing bloke, and he's been doing- he's at Dream Mech at the moment, I'm so- I'm very envious. But thank you, Swartog. You are very welcome to the many, my friend. How can you send our replays? Actually, I prepared this earlier. Oh, oh, beautiful graphs. Beautiful, sexy graphs, I know, it's actually a bit of a limp graph, but whatever. Boom! Aren't I prepared? Uh, this is how you send reviews for me to basically go and do. So this email address up at the top here. Ohm reviews, o a m reviews at gmail.com. Send your emails there. And then in the title, just send hero plus, like the hero name plus the rating. In the body, a brief description and a link to the VOD. If you don't know how to record your games, if you've got a new video card, Shadow Play is an excellent way of doing it. Um, just upload that to YouTube. If you have a Twitch stream, as long as the stream is in high quality, like 3.5k bitrate throughout, I'll consider it. I'll look at it. Um, quality is one of those things that is worth mentioning. Also, if you are a subscriber, please say in the description that you are a subscriber. Um, just subscribers get a little bit of extra priority. Um, just as like a thank you to them for supporting me and helping me do that. Uh, it's, it's not like a massive amount of priority, guys. You just have to trust me on that. But if I'm deciding between, hey, oh, I've got these two great games that I want to review. One's a sub, one isn't. I want to give it to the sub. Just as a, a thank you to them. Do you think uh, Reaper is in a good spot in the meta at the moment? My friends have told me he's out, but I don't know. I think Reaper's fine in the meta. Reaper isn't god tier in the meta anymore. That's that's the thing. Reaper has no more broken ass combo with Anna, but Reaper is still incredibly good at the jobs that Reaper is good at. Which is is nice. Reaper is meant to be a tank buster. Reaper is meant to kill tanks and tank heavy comps. If they are running a tank heavy comp, Reaper is a good pick. It's it's that simple. Don't be afraid of picking Reaper for that reason. 
Um, Reaper is also just still very good on control maps as well. Um, if you're running a Lucio, you can coordinate with. Speed boost plus Reaper is still very, very effective. Always has been, always will be. The Reaper, I think, is perfectly fine. Like, he's one of the few characters that have gone unchanged, and I think he's still a good pick. I don't think anything has really changed that makes him a worse one, if that makes sense. Uh, what is the best way to get people to communicate via voice chat and or deal with uh, toxicity in voice comms? Dealing with toxicity in voice comms, just try and ignore the person, just block them, uh, just mute them. Like, if someone is being toxic intentionally, um, the best thing to do is just mute them. Because they aren't looking to be reasoned with. They aren't looking for a reasonable discussion to be talked down and to win. You can try and do it sometimes, occasionally, but in general, like, after you've tried it once, and they, if they just keep trolling, just mute them. And then after the game is done, you can unmute them and have a chat. And I've seen Valk do this a number of times and just talk people down. Just say, hey, yeah, no, we're just looking to win. Like, I'm not looking to judge what you're playing. I'm not looking to shout at you. I'm not looking to put blame on you. We just want to communicate and win. Um, so, yeah. But if someone's being obviously toxic, just mute them. Best way to encourage people to use voice chat is to use it yourself. Um, you'll be surprised at the number of people that come up. If you just join the voice chat and just say, hey, hi. And literally at the start of the game. Hey there. And then just make simple calls. Simple short calls is the key. Like, um, you know, oh, Tracer behind. Like, that's, that's all people need to know in general. Oh, Tracer, tracer in, in the back. And even better if you're playing like DPS, Tracer in the back, I'll deal with it. Then people know what to do and they can sort of construct around it. And you'll find that people just start waking up and they just start communicating. And it's magic. It is magic. It does happen. And like Valk says, it's too much effort to reason with people who are toxic. It's too distracting for you as well. You don't want to be thinking about that guy. Thank you, Valk. Thank you. Thank you for being... Yes, Tracer behind. Yes. Wait. We have, we have an emote for that. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, God. Children. Children. Um, but yeah, you'll be surprised at how quickly people start using voice once you... Uh, Real Lady Vaughn asks, someone ask your thoughts on average game skill with Anna. Any opinions? Ask your thoughts on average game skill with Anna. I'm trying to think of what you mean. My average game skill with Anna? Or like an average skill game is Anna, does Anna fit into that? And I guess like there's, there's only one way to develop how you play Anna and that's to play Anna. Just give people the benefit of the doubt if they pick a hard to play hero. And if it doesn't work, then just say, hey, it doesn't work. <sighs> if you need Anna advice, come to Miss. Miss is a pretty good Anna. My Anna is pretty damn solid as well, so you can trust in me. One of my most played heroes. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm in the mood for some games. I am in the mood for some games, so let's play some games. Let's play some Overwatch. Uh, I'm going to go to this screen over here, just to transition. And let's, let's load up Overwatch. <laughs> 